Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. Today we're going to be discussing something I find pretty interesting, uh, and before we get into that, I just want to say, uh, be sure to check out the description because one of my buddies uh, actually started up a Poke School Discord where uh, you can go to just generally learn about competitive Pokemon and VGC and ask for team building help. You can find that in my server as well, but this server is specialized exactly for that, both of which are going to be linked in the description, and I am part owner of that server, so if you need any help with the team, you can probably find me there. But today's topic is going to be Pokemon that I think are actually going to be game changing if they're added into Sword and Shield VGC. Now recently Game Freak announced that there was going to be DLC for Pokemon Sword and Shield which would in total add about 200 new Pokemon. Now we know for a fact that every legendary is coming back and when you reduce the amount of legendaries coming back uh, there actually isn't that many Pokemon coming back. It's enough where it'll make a huge difference like a huge difference in Pokemon. Um, but you also have to remember that this includes pre-evolutions, uh, those not fully evolved Pokemon, probably some garbage ones. And there are some Pokemon that I really hope make the cut, uh, the new cut, <laughs> as opposed to the uh, the original cut that happened when Sword and Shield came out. And you can see all them right here. I'm going to go in-depth as to why I think they would be game-changing in VGC and why I really, really want them included. Uh, I've actually included them in this please come home folder. <laughs> but yeah. If you guys enjoy this sampling time, you should leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content. And also, I I'm doing this on Pokemon Showdown because it's much easier to present to you guys the moves that they learn and the uh, the stats that they have. And they're also not in Pokemon Sword and Shield, so I can't do my typical layout where you see their stats and a little clip of them moving around in Pokemon Camp. But yeah, uh, answer my comment question of the day, which is, of course, what do you want to come back in Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, when these updates roll out? And let's get into this video. We already know that Garchomp and Talonflame are actually coming back. And like, I, I mean, like, of course they're coming back, but I want to explain to you guys why this is so huge. So we're, we're going to start off with them. Like them coming back is going to be huge. And they're adding so many new Pokemon, but it isn't every single Pokemon. So to me, that means that we're going to see a familiar metagame uh, in 2021, when I assume these guys are going to become legal. Uh, but that metagame is going to be shifted quite a bit by the arrival of these new Pokemon. So we'll start off with Garchomp, which is honestly my number five. So I, I have five Pokemon here. They're going in descending order. So number five, Garchomp. Now, the reason Garchomp is so incredible for VGC is if we take a look over here at VGC stats, what is the most common Pokemon? It's Togekiss, right? Which is countered pretty heavily by Excadrill and Duraludon. Now, Excadrill's on, like, a ton of teams. Like, I would go to Picolytics, but it's a bit outdated right now. Excadrill's on a ton of teams, and it's so prominent as, like, the best ground type in the game that it's really hard to pass up. It has Mold Breaker, so it's going to be able to beat the Rotom forms, except for Rotom Cut. Um, and also, you know, Max Steel Spike into Togekiss, even with a Bibiri Berry, Togekiss doesn't really quite appreciate that. It's also a great counter to Duraludon because um, you're able to get off those amazingly strong Max Quakes and boost your special defense, allowing you to take hits better from it. But the inclusion of Garchomp would be really, really cool. And it's not like Garchomp is inherently better than Excadrill because like I said Excadrill has that mold breaker ability. Garchomp has no way of hitting things that you see all over the place like uh, like Rotom Mo, Rotom Wash, like it can't beat the Rotom forms. You would have to like set up a Swords Dance and go for a Max Wormwind if it wanted to beat them and that just is not a very great set. It, it's threatened by Grimstar which is also very common and screens will make it hard for Garchomp to deal damage. Garchomp's actually a lot faster than Excadrill and can eat a hit because of its decent uh, physical bulk. So if we look at Excadrill, Excadrill's sitting here at 88 speed. We give it a Jolly in Nature. It's it's pretty fast, you know, it can outspeed it a lot of Pokemon in the format. Um, but Garchomp at 102 speed, that doesn't just beat Excadrill, that also beats things like Charizard and uh, other things here that it outspeeds. It outspeeds Togekiss, it uh, outspeeds Arcanine, it outspeeds Gyarados, Duraludon, Tyranitar, so many important Pokemon uh, are outsped by Garchomp. And basically what I'm saying here is his inclusion would add a greater diversity to ground types in the format. And the reason being is there are certain teams where you just want a faster ground type. And Garchomp, in my opinion, is a very risky ground type to use considering uh, how good Togekiss is, how good Grimmsnarl is, how good Gyarados is. Gyarados is like a really nice way of checking Garchomp because it has Intimidate, because it's Earthquake immune. 
Because it has good bulk and because it can go for Ice Fangs, it is a threat to Garchomp. But that being said, there are many benefits to using something like Choice Scarf Garchomp. Choice Scarf Garchomp allows you to outspeed things like Dragapult and one hit KO them with that Dragon Claw. It allows you to get really, really fast Rock Slides out, allowing you to flinch Pokemon. And it's able to just like do some pretty heavy damage with Earthquake. A lot of Pokemon don't want to take an Earthquake. Dragapult doesn't want to take an Earthquake. Arcanine doesn't want to take an Earthquake. Duraldon, Excadron, and Rhyperior don't want to take an Earthquake. Well, Rhyperior more, is more comfortable with an Earthquake because, you know, weakness policy shenanigans. Uh, but, you know, Tyranitar, none of these guys are really prepared to take an Earthquake all that well. So it's, it's just a generally good Pokemon. And I don't think it's going to be all that bad with the Dynamax format because... Like, Gyarados is stupid right now because Gyarados is able to use things like Bounce, right? Gyarados gets Bounce, it's able to boost its speed, and it's a decently strong move when you use it uh, as a max move, right? Garchomp's best speed boosting move is Aerial Ace. And, like, I, I don't think that's worth running on a set if you want to be a faster Garchomp. It's also just, like, a really good Whimsicott partner, right? So it, it would obviously be used next to Whimsicott for instant Tailwind and those really fast max quakes. But I, I feel like his inclusion is just really good. He was one of the healthiest Pokemon in VGC 2017, the last time we were in a restricted dex format. And I, I don't know. I just think it's going to be a really cool dynamic seeing Garchomp on teams willing to risk the uh, lack of ability to beat the Rotom forms. Um for the greater potential to uh, do damage to faster Pokemon. And there would be teams using Excadrill that are a bit more reliable. They are able to beat Togekiss. They're able to beat the Rotom forms with the Mold Breaker Earthquake. And like, it just, it just be a really cool dynamic going on in the format. So I think Garchomp is one of the best inclusions they could have added into this game. Like, yeah, he's a fan favorite, but he'll, also he's just gonna be super cool. Next up, we have Talonflame. Now, if there's something you've noticed, there aren't very many fire types in this format. You see a lot of fire types near the top in usage, and, and that's just because fire types are, like, good. Fire types are really good in this format, uh, but we have, like, four of them. We have, like, four. Arcanine is, like, one of the best ones. Uh, Charizard is super threatening. Torkoal under Trick Room is really threatening. Uh, but, like, you, you can scroll down for a pretty long time, and then you see Rotom Heat. And then you see Scorch, and Scorch isn't even that good. It's really weak to rocks. We're really lacking some really cool support fire types. I feel like the only good support fire type is uh, that Arcanine that we saw near the top. And like, you know, for good reason. Fire types are amazing as support Pokemon. They have access to Will-O-Wisp and Arcanine has Intimidate. And it's just a generally good defensive typing. Now Talonflame takes that to an extreme. It was really, really interesting seeing how Talonflame was being used in VGC 17. And I feel like it would take a very similar role in VGC 2020 since it's being added. But, you know, VGC 2021 next year. So Gale Wings. At full HP, Flying type moves have their priority increased by one. So basically, priority Tailwind. Priority Brave Bird, Priority Acrobatics, Priority Roost. However, a lot of times that priority isn't even going to matter too much because this thing is so fast. 120 base speed or 126 base speed is such an amazing speed tier, especially with how slow this format is. Um, that would allow it to get off some really, really fast Will O Wisp, taunt some important Pokemon, it get those Tailwinds off. I mean, Tailwind is free, but you, you know what I mean. Um, and generally, because it's so fast, you can afford to run less speed. Like, if we set this guy to level 50, if we set this guy to level 50, right, we, we can see that it's outspeeding a decent amount of Pokemon with little to no investment. So that allows you to put more in HP. That allows you to put more in your offenses. And the tools that this thing has at its disposal are insane. Tailwind, Will-O-Wisp, Taunt, Flare Blitz, Quick Guard. Quick Guard can prevent fake outs. It, it's so good. Uh, overheat acrobatics u-turn it's got so many amazing tools and its stats actually lend to it being uh, a physical attacker because it's got 81 attack and 74 special attack but you could also opt to run like overheat because you know intimidate is a really good ability and town flames damage output isn't incredible so overheat's just a nice one-time uh not necessarily a nuke button but just a one-time powerful fire type move that will not be interrupted or it won't mind the intimidate at all and I genuinely think that Whimsicott needs to be taken down a notch. And Whimsicott's just so annoying to see in general. It gets so many good support moves. It gets Trick Room and Tailwind, which is really, really annoying. It gets Taunt as well. It gets U-Turn, which I actually saw once, which is really weird. And it's a huge threat to Dragapult. Now, Talonflame is actually a huge threat to Whimsicott. And because Talonflame is faster than Whimsicott, it means that Whimsicott can't actually taunt your Tailwind before it comes out. Prankster Taunt is plus one priority, and... Gale Wing's Tailwind is plus one priority as well. So once they're the same priority, it comes down to speed. And as you can see, 
Talonflame has a decent amount of speed over Whimsicott, so in certain cases, it's much more reliable to get your Tailwind up in the face of a Whimsicott with your with a Talonflame rather than a Whimsicott. There are so many cases where there are two Whimsicots like just staring each other down on the field, and it comes down to a speed tie. Do you get taunted? Do you get, do you get your Tailwind off? It's really, really annoying, and I think Talonflame is the perfect Pokemon to take Whimsicott down a few notches. The next one that I want to talk about is Crobat. Crobat's actually really, really cool. We saw it kind of come to save VGC 2019 as a format earlier on. Uh, we saw like some really bulky sets. Uh, Inner Focus means that Crobat cannot be uh, intimidated, nor can it be flinched, which is really, really cool. Uh, that lends to uh, Crobat being a physical support Pokemon. It's got amazing speed tier too. It's even faster than Talonflame. However, it doesn't have um, annoying moves like uh, Will-O-Wisp to bug the team. But what it does have is Haze. Now, Haze is something that VGC 2020 is severely lacking. I think there are only like two good Haze users in this format, and it's Milotic and uh, Dusclops. And, like, that's that's it, in my opinion. You, you can list some more in the comment section if I... You know, if I'm really overlooking something that's being used a lot, but Crobat would be an amazing Haze user, guys. Not only that, but it's a huge threat to Togekiss. It's a huge threat to Whimsicott. Uh, Dragapult definitely wouldn't be able to one-shot it if you invest enough into your HP. Uh, Togekiss could probably one-shot it, granted, because, you know, it could go for, like, a weakness policy boosted max airstream. But generally, bulky Crobat is pretty good. It's got 85 HP and 80 defense and 80 special defense, which you probably wouldn't guess by how thin and tiny looking it is but it's such a good support pokemon just because it's got inner focus not only that but if you want to go more physical you could run like an infiltrator set to bypass things like uh grim snarl screens and that'd be that'd be pretty nice uh but i i don't think I, I think most people would actually opt for inner focus but that's just a really cool option and the moves that this thing has are super good tailwind taunt u-turn brave bird uh quick guard leech life roost it's got so many amazing options and like it's just a shame that they didn't include it in this format i feel like this could have been one of the best pokemon in the format had they included it and it wouldn't be annoying to deal with like you, you wouldn't be like sitting at your tv playing the game just like wondering like dude why why have i seen like 20 whimsicots today i i, I don't even want to sleep with my pillow tonight i want to throw my pillow out the window because i'm sick of seeing cotton dude like crobat mm, perfect pokemon it's it's like 100 sauce next up we have Alola Marowak. Now, Alola Marowak is actually a really interesting pick because I'll be honest, it would just make Gyarados even better. But let's look at all the things that Alola Marowak can actually deal with pretty effectively. Arcanine is like a non-issue. Uh, yes, it can intimidate you, but you do actually have ground type coverage and that thick club, that thick club, if you go for like a bone ring onto Arcanine, it does not appreciate that. What it is going to have trouble with are these ground types and, you know, Garchomp is being included uh, in the update. So it's going to struggle with these guys. It's going to struggle with Gyarados. It's going to struggle with a lot of Pokemon. But this Pokemon lends itself to Trick Room so well. Um, in VGC 17, we saw Trick Room, Alola Marowak do huge work. There were people running like Swords Dance, Flare Blitz, Bone Ring, uh, Shadow Bone, and it was super, super threatening on par with uh, Torkoal in certain situations. Just the fact that this thing can do so much damage right off the bat makes it so, so good. Especially with like Thick Club as an item, like it doubles your attack set after after you invest, so it's disgustingly strong. We don't know, but I would figure that this thing would keep the effect of its item even when it Dynamaxes. I figured it would work like a, a Life Orb and not like a Choice Band. So this thing like would be super, super good as a Dynamax Pokemon just because of the sheer damage it can put out on the physical side and the fact that it gets Lightning Rod. We don't have too many good Lightning Rod users this gen. We have like Togenomaru and Raichu and that's about it. You could try to run Electric, or you could try to run Manectric or Pinchurchin, but I don't think they're all that great. And I'll be honest, dude, if you're if you're running Lightning Rod, Rhyperior, you're doing it all wrong. Just just go with Solid Rock Weakness Policy, man. Let me run a damage call for you guys right now. Here is Alola Marowak, and here is Dusclops. We're gonna give Dusclops, um, like we'll, we'll talk about like worst worst case scenario, you know, 252 HP, 252 and a bold nature right that's pretty scary we give this guy plus attack the club and shadow bone and shadow bone is doing upwards of 80 percent to it if you do actually decide to go with a swords dance set no dusclops is not staying in and not only that but this thing can't be burned but let's exclude all that let's say that you don't actually just you know straight up go for the swords dance and do it let's say you decide to dynamax yeah you're just you're just killing it 
This thing is so good. This thing is so, so good just because of the damage it puts out. I, I really want this thing to come back. It's it's an amazing Pokemon. Honestly, one of my favorites. Number one, number one, my, my most wanted Pokemon for them to add back into the decks. And I'm certain it's coming. I'm pretty sure it's already in the code. But this Pokemon is so, so good. Alolan Persian. I have a thing for Alolan forms, I guess, but Alolan Persian is an amazing support Pokemon. If you look at its stats, it's like, yeah, it's got that speed, but it has nothing else. Well, once you slap on Fur Coat, this thing's defense is doubled, and that's after investment, so you know, it's, it's actually a pretty respectable stat. So you can max out that HP, you can max out that speed, you can give it uh, a bit of special defense or a bit of defense, and the move pull this thing gets is insane. Fake Out, Parting Shot, Foul Play, Taunt, Snarl, Beat Up. You know, if you're a bad person, you can use beat up, faint, knock off, quash, hypnosis, nasty plot, roar. Like, this thing is such a good support Pokemon. And pure dark isn't a bad typing at all. Like, yeah, you're weak to bug. We don't see too many bug types, though. You're weak to fairy, which is actually very important. Whimsicott's never going to Dynamax, so you can fake out into it pretty easily and remove it from the field. Togekiss is going to Dynamax, but you can still quash that thing and remove it with, like, an Excadrill or some steel type. And it's just such a good Pokemon. Like, I don't know how else to put it. It's so fast. It's exactly what this format needs. Snarl is great for support. It makes up for its lacking special defense. Faint is great for bypassing things like Protect if you want to go for a super hyper offensive strategy. Uh, and like this is just the general set that people would run. Taunt. There are so few Pokemon running Taunt in this format, and this could be one of the best Taunt users. On top of that, Foul Play is super, super good. It allows you to take on things like Dragapult. It allows you to take on things like Excadrill, uh, Snorlax, or just a direct Snorlax counter at that point. Um, Dracovish not so much because Vicious Rend is what's getting is is what's like cutting through everything, uh, not its attack set. Its attack set's actually pretty mediocre, but Vicious Rend really makes up for it. Uh, yeah, it's just got such an amazing support move pool. And uh, Parting Shot, like Parting Shot is so good. They're, they're giving it to Incineroar, and Incineroar is definitely coming back, so that's going to be scary. But <laughs> Parting Shot allows you to lead off with Persian. Go for a fake out, do whatever you need to do, and then lower their stats as you switch out. That's such an amazing move, and I just really hope that this Pokemon manages to uh, make its way into the game. I'm like 90% sure it's already in the game, but as you can see, I, I have a lot of nostalgia for VGC 17, and that's just because these Pokemon were so good in that format, and they could be good again, and they just complement a lot of the new Galarian Pokemon so well. But I think that's all I really have to say about this today, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoy this video at any point in time. Uh, let's try to shoot for like 150 likes today, maybe 200. Whatever you whatever you feel. I'll, I'll go with 175. How about that? But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you. Um, thank you to my Patreons. I know this one was like not an edited video, but I just need to get my thoughts out there about this really, really quick. But yeah, with that, I'm going to call guys. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.